honestly, I think psychologists will say, and there's studies out there that say the loss of a pet is sometimes even harder than the loss of a human loved one yes. because their love for us is so unconditional. You're not sure if other people understand what that feels like. So it's kind of a private grief. Um, mm-hmm. So these are ways to acknowledge grief. Hi, I'm Tori Mystic, and you're listening to the Wear, Wag, Repeat podcast the only show dedicated to supporting women in all areas of the pet industry. In this episode, I'm excited to introduce you to Remy Bibeau, the co-founder of Pet Perennials, a company that has carved out a unique niche in the pet industry by focusing on an often overlooked aspect, pet loss. Remy's journey is a testament to the power of attention to detail and the importance of making customers feel special, even in a niche that many shy away from discussing. She delves into the challenges and rewards of working in the pet loss sector and how her company, Pet Perennials, has managed to create a meaningful impact in this space. One of the key takeaways from our chat is the importance of attention to detail in business. Remy's meticulous approach to creating thoughtful and personalized gifts for pet owners dealing with loss is a lesson in how focusing on the small things can make a big difference. Get ready to hear directly from Remy about her journey, the lessons she's learned, and how you can apply these insights to your own pet business. Whether you're a seasoned business owner or just starting out, this episode is packed with valuable advice that will inspire you to look at your business and the customers you serve from a new perspective. In case you discovered this episode looking to help a loved one work through their own pet loss grief, please check out the show notes for a link to a blog post I wrote about meaningful gestures and thoughtful gifts that can make an impact at times like these. And although we are talking about pet loss here, I want you to know this episode is not a downer. Don't hit pause. Don't pick a different episode. I know you are going to enjoy this conversation and pick up some lessons to apply to your own business. Okay, now let's get into it. Remy Bibeau is a two-time entrepreneur. She started her first business in 2003, and when she sold it in 2014, instead of taking a break, she teamed up with Lori Davidson to co-found Pet Perennials. This new business was close to Remy's heart. It was inspired by the love and loss of her dog, Olive. Remy wanted to create something meaningful that would help people send caring and personalized gifts to help others who had lost a pet. Outside of her business, Remy's life is filled with the love she has for animals. Her seven-year-old black Labrador named Harley was adopted at a shelter event that Pet Perennials sponsored. She has not only built a successful career, but has also used her passion and skills to bring comfort and support to pet lovers during their time of need. Hi, Remy. Hi, Tori. How are you? I'm doing good. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Of course, of course. We've known each other for some time now, and we're both Pittsburghers. So we're we're Pittsburgh girls. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. (laughs) We should have done our interview in person. uh, You know what? I think the first time I sat down with you was several years ago. We were just, you know, getting to know each other. Um, So, yeah, we could do that in person. I know we could have had all the dogs together and it would have just been total mayhem. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. And my dog loves water too. Harley, she's a black lab and she loves the water. She is. She heard her name. So she's like jingling back there. (laughs) She's like, oh, are we going for a walk? (laughs) I can't say the word. I have to spell it out because she knows as soon as I say it, she's, you know, perks up and ready to go. It's so funny. Sometimes when I'm talking to people, interviewing them on the podcast, their, their animals can hear me speaking through the computer and they get like all excited in the background. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry to everyone and, or anyone who's listening. And sometimes listeners tell me their pets get excited listening to our conversations. <laughs> um, but anyhow, tell us about pet perennial. So I know all about what you do because I've known you for years, but our listeners might not be familiar. So what is pet perennials? So we're a direct 
to consumer gift company. Um, you can go to petperennials.com. Um, and what we do is make it really easy for anybody, be it a consumer or a business, to send something thoughtful when someone loses their pet. Now, that's 90% of what we do because that's how we got started. You talked about my dog, Olive, who was the inspiration. And we call her the chief inspiration officer. So um, so 90% of what we do is sending sympathy packages. So you, if you're a consumer, you just pick the gift, pick your card, type your message and check out. We handwrite the card, we gift wrap it, and then ship it right to that person with the broken heart. If you're a business, we encourage all businesses to register for what's called a gift perks account because it is specifically for businesses. You get discounts on day one um, that are about 20% less than what the consumer pays. Um, and then you're able with that account to log in, do the same thing, You know, pick your gift from the sympathy collection. We have a birthday collection. We have a welcome new pet collection. We have a milestone collection because over time, Tori, our businesses that we do service and send packages for said, you do this sympathy thing so well, what do you do when, you know, um, maybe the human loved one, the client themselves or their, their partner passes? So there's actually a human sympathy collection within the business like dashboard, um, the shopping dashboard for businesses. So if you need to send something uh, in honor of a actual client or their human loved one, there's that. So what do you do for babies and all those other things? So we have pet centric gifts that you can actually send to your clients that welcome a new human baby too, or um, celebrate an engagement. And they're again, pet themed gifts. So, and businesses ask us for that. Um, so it's, we just make it really easy and you know, it's done because oftentimes you're busy as a groomer or a photographer or a daycare and boarding center or a veterinarian, but all they need to do is just have someone on their team or even them log in when they have the time, pick the gift, pick the card, type the message, check out. We make sure it gets into the hands of the person um, that yeah. they want to send it to. So, Well, as obviously those condolences are appreciated at any time, um, but if you can kind of get something in someone's hands sooner and, and just have it be done and know that they're being thought of. And yeah. um, that's really important. Yeah, absolutely. And our businesses that have used us have said, this is some of the best marketing we've ever done. We didn't think of it as marketing. We just wanted to do something nice for someone, somebody that we've known for a long time. But on the backside, as we say, goodwill is good PR because that person who receives that package they're telling their friends, their family, um, they're putting it out on their social media pages saying, you know, look what my groomer did for me or, oh, my gosh, look at our breeder scent. Um, so it goes out on social media uh, and then, you know, uh, it brings new customers in because they learn about you through this just this thoughtful gesture. Um, yeah. And again, whether it's at the end of a pet's life, it's commemorating and honoring that pet. Or it's at the beginning, you know, it's just people, it's just giving a deeper customer experience, right? And we're all trying to figure that out. It enhances and increases the lifetime value of that client too. Right. When I think that there's just like something, something very special about making someone feel, you know, like, like you care about them, like they're a real person at this time, like, especially when they're, when their pet has passed and, uh, like a story just kind of popped into my mind of someone shared this on social media. And I think it, I don't know if it went viral, but I certainly saw it. It wasn't someone I was following and um, they had reached out. They had gotten like their auto ship of their dog food yeah. and they reached out to the company and said, my dog died. I right. can't use this yep. food. And yep. the company was like, please donate it. Like we're going to refund you. And then you can donate it to a shelter, yeah. pay it forward. And then I don't know if they followed up with some kind of um, remembrance gift or not, but they certainly should have. Um, but it was, you know, that, that story really has stuck with me. I, I saw that video probably years ago because it's just when you're feeling your worst for someone to just do something a little kind, it yeah, means so absolutely. much. Well, and the grief from pet loss is kind of disenfranchised, you know, um, it's not like when you, you, well, honestly, I think psychologists will say, and there's studies out there that say the loss of a pet is sometimes even harder than the loss of a human loved one yes. because their love for us is so unconditional. We all know those of us who have dogs or whether it's cats, 
they're just so excited when we come home. It's like, you know, we walk on water to them. Um, so they're part of everything we do. They're 24 seven, you know? Um, so when you lose them, uh, it's just like, there's this void and then you're not sure if other people understand what that feels like. So it's kind of a private grief. Um, Mm -hmm. so these are ways to acknowledge grief. So it does a lot in the healing process for the person that receives these gifts. Um, and then again, it does a lot for the business on the backside. So we all know you were talking about the the uh, video you had seen. You know, Chewy has send stuff. Um, I don't know if they do it. For I every think it was client. Chewy. It I think that was, was. The yeah. But look, I mean, that. that's a perfect example, mm-hmm. right? And I've seen people post about how Chewy sent them this and that. And they'll send a dozen flowers or you know a bouquet of flowers or something. So um, we have a lot of options really nice options that can be personalized too. our name pet perennials um, dot com evolved from our first product. That's the pet perennials kit. It's a wildflower gardening kit. So it's everything you need inside of this little uh, cotton muslin bag, really cute um, that grows wildflowers uh, the, in memory of that pet. And you can actually, if the person um, has cremated their pet, you can include some of the ash when you're making your custom seed wafers that goes into making these little heart and paw seed wafers that then grow into flowers that come back season after season. So my dog olives flowers are still growing in my hillside behind my home. Um, And then we have candles with keepsakes embedded inside the candles frames. You can upload a photo. We'll put it into the frame before we send it to the person wind chimes, sun catchers. So beyond just that, uh, initial uh, package that comes to comfort, they have that item that brings them, you know, joyful memories as yeah. time goes on too. Well, and I, I hesitated to mention that it was chewy because I feel like that is like almost a four letter word, five letter word <laughs> in yeah, the pet yeah. industry, in the independent pet industry. I, I yes. feel like pet parents that I talk to that aren't in the industry, they're all like, Oh, I love chewy, right. but but all they all know. business owners are like, right. oh, I hate them. They're ruining yeah. my life. Yeah. Um, and so I think as, you know, small independent businesses, I could see how you're like, oh, great. Well, they sent flowers or they sent a right. painting of someone's dog or, yeah. Yeah. or whatever it is that they sent. I can't compete. Um, but like, how, what is the price range for some yeah. of your gifts? You just you just said, you know, what was most important here, too, is we make it so affordable. Um, the average package price that somebody spends, a business spends, is $27.75. And it's all-inclusive. So if you're picking our Healing Hearts uh, keepsake candle, um, you get the candle, the handwritten card, the gift wrap, and the shipping anywhere in the United States. So it really, truly is affordable. Um, yeah. You don't have to break the bank. And you can decide what you want to send and how much you want to spend. So, you know, again, the average is $27.75. You could add three gifts into the bundle and get into the $60 range. But even at that, I don't even think you can send a bouquet of flowers for less than $60, $70, right? And, you know, flowers do die. They go into a vase and then they die. Where these are keepsakes. We think about this when we're producing our products. We design probably six of our products, and then we get the other stuff from companies that just do it really well. Um, But we think about all that when we're creating. When the idea comes into our hearts, we think, okay, does it, one, bring comfort to the pet lover, and two, honor the pet's memory? You know, so um, that goes into everything. And then being, shipping is key, too, because you know, shipping's included in that price, right? Because oh, and shipping has go gone out up so much. Uh, oh, yeah. Last year. Believe yeah. Me, yeah. As a business, we've had to navigate that whole thing too. It's like every twice a year now, the US Postal Service is doing rate increases. And it's like, how's this going to impact us? But we've been able to continue to stay in that, like that price range. So, you know, $30. If you want to add, upsell it, you can certainly add more things to your package. But um, yeah, and and it's a it's an entire experience when it lands in their mailbox. They open it. They think, wait a minute, who sent me this? They see the lovely gift. They see the card, and then they're just so grateful. So the whole unboxing experience really is um, something special. 
Okay. I have a question from like a logistics point of view. That's the handwritten note. How, what is your distribution center? Like where are these things and who's right? How do you hand yeah, write all the notes? Our team, we, we hand write them. Yeah. I mean, we just, we have a process. Um, you know, most of the gifts are on the shelves and you can pull them. And then we set up our cards and once the gifts are boxed up, then we get to doing the cards. And sometimes I have to jump in still and write cards. <laughs> so, you know, as we grow more and more too, it's like that everybody loves that, you know, mm -hmm. we can print something that looks like it's written, um, but it's not the same, right? Right, right. So, so when our, you hire new employees, do you do a handwriting test? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's so funny because my assistant is half my age and, um, she said she never learned handwriting. So she said they just didn't teach it. And I was shocked. I'm like, wait a minute. I'm going to have to ask my nieces. Did they learn handwriting? I know. They, they, none didn't. of them. They can't do cursive anymore. For no. Sure. And she said, every time I read your handwriting, like I would write her cards for Christmas or whatever. She said, it makes me cry just because it's handwritten. And I'm like, it's so funny. But so whether it's printed nicely or it's handwritten, you know. <laughs> It is done by hand. So. Yeah. Well, and it, it is that special touch, I think, makes a huge difference. Um, and so it is, me, remember this too, it is the business's message. While we might be the ones writing it, it's the business's message. They create that. So if they want to put their team's names on it and say, you know, love, um, you know, four paws daycare center, Mark, Tammy, you know, Melissa, whatever, that's what we put for the closure, you know? So it is still really personalized, even if they're not the ones writing the card. And frankly, that's why they use us because they don't have time. They've got to take good care of people at their daycare center. They've got lots of dogs to groom or, you know, pets to see at the veterinarian office. So, right. Yeah. Or yeah, it's just, it's all those little details and they just kind of click, click order and it's done. And mm -hmm. it's, it's their thought. They're being thoughtful of their customer, but you guys are right. kind of take, tying up all the loose ends. Yeah. And that's one of the things we always do too. When we send a package out, we always put a card in there that says, you know, be sure to thank the person who sent you this um, because that's important. And uh, nine times out of 10, they're going to do it anyway. They call their clients. Our customers say they call them crying saying, oh my gosh, thank you. This is the most, most, you know, special thing. They have thank you notes that they get in exchange and they've showed us their, you know, shown us their thank you notes. Um, so yeah, it's um, it's the thought starts with the business. We just we just make it happen, right? We just get yeah. the, that package to the person. Well, and that's I think that's important too of of the recipient reaching out to who who sent this gift to them in in remembrance of their pet or in celebration of their pet, because I like you said you can feel very alone in pet grief because it is not recognized by everybody. Um, so just kind of starting the conversation or keeping the conversation going would be very healing. Yeah, absolutely. That's mm -hmm. what we always say is thoughtful gifts for pet lovers is our tagline. And, you know, our mission is to bring comfort to broken hearts. So, yeah. Um, okay. So shif shifting the conversation to try and, um, I don't know, I didn't have a good segue, but to shift the conversation a little bit to like, <laughs> The, the business segue. side of things. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> I know people get a little bit stressed when I talk about pet loss too much. So, um, so we'll talk about some business stuff too. So, um, you had, had included in your bio that you had another business for 10 ish years before this. Yeah. Um, what was your previous business? I actually don't know. Total deviation. I mean, when I jumped into this, I really was just a dog mom. Um, who loved my dog, Olive, who came to my office with me every day at my old business, but it has nothing to do with the industry. So um, I had a, an IT consulting company that worked specifically with K-12 public schools and charter schools. And what we did was uh, uh, got them federal money to pay for all of their networking infrastructure, their internet services, their broadband technology. Um, so we really, um, uh, we niched in, it seems like I do these niche businesses, right? Cause it does. there's a, yeah. there's a, there's a problem. It's not being solved. So, you know, we then, you know, work with a lot of charter schools all over the country from Los Angeles to Newark, to DC, to, uh, 
Ohio, Pennsylvania, Texas. Yeah. Well, it sounds like it, it's very niche, but also it sounds like that was really about like helping people getting schools funding. I mean, how important is that? Oh yeah, absolutely. And I think too, you know, my, I grew up in a family of educators. Um, my mom was a teacher. She taught in the public school system. My brother and his wife were teachers, my aunt, my uncle. So I was surrounded, you know, by educators. And I always thought one day I might like to teach. Um, but then I went the business route. I worked in telecommunications and in sales and all that. And um, at, at one point when that whole thing was shifting, I thought, you know, what I was doing in business could be applied also to the education uh, uh, mar- market. And so then I just started, you know, reaching out to schools and started the other company and then quickly realized that charter schools specifically that are another choice of education for parents. If you can't afford to go to um, send your kid to a private school or a Catholic school, your only option is the school district that you live in. Well, charter schools have changed that um, that, you know, environment for parents that want to have another choice. And so I really like you know, what charter schools were doing for the most part and um, thought that it helped some of the neediest communities that didn't yeah. have other options. So, and of course it was became a no brainer for the schools to work with my organization because it, you know, for some of them, it was millions of dollars, you know, right, right. and for smaller schools, it's still a couple hundred thousand dollars a year to help them, it's you know, pay impact. to educate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, is there anything from that business that that has helped you in growing pet perennials? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one, the background just in starting the fundamentals of what you need to start a business. Um, you know, the technology, I had a I had a bit of a jump start on that because um, you know, I had built or been responsible for building our previous website. I was in IT prior to starting that business. So I had some background, enough knowledge to kind of see the vision and then put the foundational pieces together. Um, And then just some of the, you know, the uh, business planning, um, uh, you know, laying out, you know, your vision and taking it from paper to, to, uh, you know, creating it from the ground up. But I will tell you, the pet industry, and you probably know this story, is one tough nut to crack. I mean, people love their animals, But when you are not selling consumables like treats and food, it's then, okay, how do you get found, right? And with us, we're talking about a subject that people don't really want to think about, but it happens every day, you know? So I've seen, though, in the shift over the last eight years that we've been in business, the collective mindset is changing. People even if you're not a pet owner, they also are understanding that pets are family to people. So I did not have the perfect formula. Lori and I just kind of were dog moms. She's now a cat mom and thought the world's going to love what we do. And it wasn't, you know, it wasn't easy getting to this point. Um, and, and then, of course, we have the last couple of years, too, with this crazy time, you know, that we've been all living through. That you just keep having to navigate and just, you know, um, you know, trucking through. You're right. I, I mean, I, I think it is a struggle. Um, you know, I had an online store for five years and um, I thought I had such, I loved, I still love everything I carried, but yeah. it was hard to to, to crack the nut of the, of the consumers, yeah. because they would say, Oh, I want a dog mom shirt. And they're walking around target and they just buy the dog mom shirt at target. Right. And yeah. I'm like, Oh, I hired an artist to make this specifically yeah. for you. Yeah. It's hand illustrated. It's so cool. It's made in an eco-friendly way. Like yeah. all the thought that I was putting into it didn't translate. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, it, it, it was just kind of interesting to observe that. So I, I agree with you. I think that, um, the pet industry is such a supportive, cool place, but getting consumers to understand kind of why we're doing things a certain way is a little hard still. Yeah. Well, and I mean, just, just the same in the industry, um, you have the big box stores, right. And this is 
So we're all a lot of independent businesses for the most part. And we're competing every day with these big box stores or these big e-commerce brands that sell everything under the sun. And then there's Amazon, right? You can buy underwear and kitchen sinks on Amazon because I know I've done both. <laughs> I have my I know. warm sink I bought on Amazon and I, you know, purchased underwear for Steve over the years on, uh, you know, Amazon. So you can find anything there, but what they don't do is the highly personalized, right? Mm -hmm. So for service providers, you're touching that pet, you know, as a groomer, you're um, caring for that pet, giving it a place to romp and play if you're a daycare center. Um, And then, you know, a breeder, your, you know, trainer, all those things, we're actually touching the pet. Those places can't do that. Um, And then just how important it is, there's that final touch, right, for that pet at the end of their life. And that is where you could send something, you know, really Mm -hmm. thoughtful that just really jibes with what you've done, you know, over the lifetime of that pet with the client. So, right. You can pick pick out something kind of transcend, right? right? That's how we transcend this big box sort of thing. Yes. Yes. And we need to, I think we all need to really support each other because, you know, sure you could order something on Amazon and you could put in a gift note or or something, but it's printed on this like flimsy cheapo paper in this crappy font with this dumb little gift emoji on it. I hate their gift messages. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yeah. So and you pay for that now you used to get, I think gift wrapping and stuff was free. Now it doesn't compare. Right. So, so it's it's very important, I think, that all of us who have small businesses support other small businesses, um, you know, in, in every way that you can. I think it's really important. Oh, I 100% agree. So, so Remy, where, um, where can people go to learn about Pet Perennials um, or to sign up for the, bu- the business account? Is that what it's called? Yep. It's called um, gift perks. Yeah. The gift perks account. Um, what's what's the best place to go to figure that all out? So they can go to petperennials.com and consumers can just shop right there. It'll say shop our collections and have pet loss, birthday or milestones. We have greeting cards, things like that. As a business, you can go to the business programs page. It's on the main menu and then register what's called gift perks. Gift perks is just simply creating an account. So when, when you do need to order, you'll log into that account, shop the different collections that are visible to you in your dashboard, whether that's again, pet loss, human loss, um, birthdays, milestones, get well. Um, Even now we're doing a little bit of a a, a recognition packages. So whether it's for your employees, somebody you want to recognize, or maybe even a customer send something just to recognize they've been, you know, your customer for so long or something. Um, So you shop the collection, again, pick the gift, pick the card, type your message, check out. That's all you're paying. You only pay as you order packages. There's no monthly fee to have an account. You never charge for that. And then what's really nice is when you do order something, whether it's a consumer or a business, um, you have a notification to send that you have your invoice, right? And then when it ships, you're told that it ships. And then on the backside, if you want, you could be uh, you could be messaged that it was delivered. So all of those things make it really nice for a business. So they know the second I hit that button to order, I'm going to be able to track that whole process and know that it got done. And we're really good at fulfilling orders within 24 to 48 hours, especially with sympathy, because we know, you know, um, we want to do it while it's timely. Um, So we do our best to get orders out 24 to 48 hours from the time of order, other than when there's holidays. And, you know, if it comes in on the weekend, sometime Saturday into Sunday, it doesn't go out till Monday just because of the postal system. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, yeah. Oh, and the other thing too, Tori, is we have wholesale counts. So we produce a couple of our products. As I said, I think there's about six or seven products that we designed and then also uh, produce. People can resell our products. So if they have a retail environment, and we do. So we'll encourage businesses, if you would like to resell product, register for both the gift perks and the wholesale account. Then that way you can shop what we do have available for wholesale. And we brought out this really uh, cute line of pet air fresheners. They're car air fresheners. And it's a, a, 
a series of different animals, whether it's dogs, cats, horses, we have a, a, a rabbit, we have a bird, we have a uh, hamster. They're all really adorable characters with the you know cutest little sayings. It's called Positively Fresh. And so these are great gifts, things to keep at the front desk of a business. Um, somebody comes in, they can grab one of those air fresheners. We wholesale those too above our other, you know, sympathy products. So, mm-hmm. well, I definitely recommend everyone check out your like flagship founding product, the wildflowers, because I just think that's really cool to have something to remember your dog or your cat or whatever pet um, that keeps growing, that like they're still with you um, as long as these keep growing and they come back year after year. And I just think that's really cool. Yeah. And we have a horse version of that too. So if anybody on here is a horse lover, we do have a horse version of the kit. So oh, um, cool. it's, it's just, we, we try to cover as many bases as we can with people's pets. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's really awesome. Well, thank you again so much for this conversation. Uh, I know we kind of touched on a lot of things, so I hope everyone enjoyed listening. Um, and thanks again for your time. Oh my gosh, Tori, thank you for having me on. Some of the best conversations happen after the episode. Send me a note on Instagram at wherewagrepeat or find even more women petpreneurs to connect with in our private Facebook group called Where Wag Repeat Labs. If you want to dig into more episodes, resources to grow your business, or find a link to something we discussed, it is all right there for you at wherewagrepeat.com. I'll see you back here next Wednesday for a fresh conversation.